Templates let you turn a set of patterns into parametric templates that can rebuild new patterns to fit different dimensions. This is much more flexible than simply scaling. A parametric pattern is a pattern that's tied to parameters, which can change the pattern's size and shape when those parameters change. If creating parametric patterns sounds like more trouble than it's worth, keep watching. It can be a huge time saver and can even be fun. If your company offers or wants to offer customizable products in a variety of sizes or dimensions, then the time to create the template is more than repaid when you can generate new patterns for any dimension with just a few mouse clicks. You'll be able to do the work once and then quickly generate an unlimited number of new patterns for a product in any size. You probably lay out your patterns using rules or equations based on the finished size of your product. If you already know those rules, creating your parametric templates is quick and easy. Before we begin, we'll take a quick tour of the layout for templates. This is the pattern canvas. It holds all the patterns you've included in your template. You can zoom using the mouse wheel or from the view ribbon, pan by pressing down on the mouse wheel, and you can select and move any pattern by holding the left mouse button. The variables window holds all of the measured values that the finished patterns will match. These are usually basic dimensions that can be measured on the finished product. The parameters window holds the parameter names and the algebraic expressions that compute their final value. The tool window shows the name of the tool currently in use, along with information and controls that apply to that tool. The controls tab holds all of the tools you'll use to attach controls to your patterns. The Parameters tab is where you will create names and expressions for parameters. When you click Add in either the Variables or the Parameters window, Templates opens the Parameters tab, ready for you to enter your data. There are a few things that make patterns different from drawings that let templates do its work. Patterns have a perimeter made from geometric elements that connect at endpoints. Templates moves those endpoints to new positions determined by your rules, then modifies the elements so they stay connected. The modified elements are called geosims, which stands for geometrically similar. Geosims look like this. We'll use the simplest possible pattern to demonstrate how templates works. Here's a rectangle, and we just want to be able to change its width and height. First, we'll establish variables for the data our template will use. For this example, we only need width and height. We'll set the initial values to 15 and 10. In templates, we call the start and end points of every element template points. Controls instruct each template point how to move in response to the rules for each pattern. You can attach controls between any two template points. There are two types of controls. Template point controls move endpoints. Element controls modify the elements between the endpoints. The controls you'll use most often are extenders and constraints. Extenders are used to move an endpoint to a new position relative to its start point. Since we want to set the width and height for our rectangle, we'll start by adding a horizontal extender to the bottom. Notice that snapping to template points is automatic. Most controls include direction. The first point we click becomes the anchor, and the second point becomes the moving point. You'll see an arrow at the moving end. We want to link this control to the value of the width variable, so we select width from the tool window dropdown. The dropdown contains all current variables and parameters. We'll use a vertical extender to link our rectangle's height to the height variable. We start at the same anchor we used for the width. If we apply variables now, the two template points that have controls move to their new locations. But you can see that we still need to apply controls to the diagonal corner in order to keep it aligned with the other corners. If we add a horizontal constraint between the top left corner and the diagonal point, it will keep the diagonal corner aligned horizontally. So we'll do the same using a vertical constraint from the bottom right corner. 
Now, when we apply variables to the pattern, our rectangle takes on the size and shape called for by the current variable values. When we change those values, the pattern assumes its new size and shape. In this example, we've only linked controls to variables, and variables can only hold measurements. When you need to link controls to equations or formulas, you can do that with parameters. Suppose you want to add a fillet in the top right corner and set its radius to one-fourth the average of the width and the height. We'll click Add in the parameter window, name the new parameter radius, and then set its value. You can use any algebraic expression for a parameter. Click Evaluate to make sure there are no errors. Now click Accept and the radius is included in the parameters window. We'll add a fillet in the corner and link it to radius using the drop-down. When we click Apply Variables to our template, we see the new size and shape. When you click on Generate Patterns, you'll see a new project open in Patternsmith with the resulting pattern. In the next tutorial, we'll look at variables, parameters, and expressions in more depth.